Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, like fire. a terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate, and a happy new year. 2020 may not yet feel too different from 2019, but make no mistake, we won't be standing still on The Advocate. I'll be igniting the torch by tackling the massive misdemeanor that is the National Assembly building and the budget for its renovation. Treasure, a newcomer on The Advocate, is a torchbearer in her own right. She is saying what's good for the goose is good for the gander. In other words, both pregnant schoolgirls and their accomplices should be allowed to remain in school. Ikene wants to reset a default mode, default dishonesty to default honesty. Well, the new year would be a good time to start. Seydou is about foundational or even moral reform. He is tackling single parenting. Emeka is certainly starting the year on a good note. Recently, the expression, the straw that broke the camel's back, keeps coming to mind. For love or not, and country. The National Theatre London, designed by Dennis Lasdon in 1976, and the National Assembly, Abuja. Small bit of history for both. The National Theatre, London that is, was found to be above budget on completion of the drawings and other related cost documents. So what to do? Well, the patriotic team simply put the drawings in a photocopy machine, chose a percentage scale down. So today, though, some spaces have awkward dimensions or are a little small. The cost came down anyhow. Today, the theatre is grade two listed with turnover of over $100 million. National Assembly, Abuja. With all the architects available in Nigeria, General Abacha awarded the contract for design and build in 1996 to ITB, a foreign construction firm with a disingenuously contrived German name, Ingenue und Tiefbau, who are widely believed to have been his lackeys. And they are not German. The drawings were scaled down in the same manner but the costs of $35 million were left as was. So where this team was not patriotic, they were smart and sharp. Back to the future today. Major General Buhari has asked for and received 37 billion Naira, that's about $103 million, for renovation of the assembly, an impossible figure. But in return, he gets to sink Nigeria into further debt by being obliged by the same assembly of his wish to borrow $30 billion with no solid plan for repayment. So once again, I ask, why do we do this to ourselves in Africa? Cheat, steal from, disrespect our own sisters and brothers. Why at a time of extreme hardship do we engage in this taunting game? When a man is held unreasonably for semantically inspired charges, where several citizens are in state custody for challenging the corrupt system, where government millionaires are still being created every day. 37 billion naira is way beyond what should be spent on a parliament complex in a nation without water, light, food, and housing, without infrastructure, education, and health facilities for all. Note that the complex is not of particularly listable design heritage. We must continue to challenge the decisions and actions of this regime in courts of law and public opinion. We must continue to expose inglorious acts in the safest ways we can, for indeed our own lives are precious. The system as is will trigger a revolution. In what form, I can't say. Love is supposed to be selfless and given, but in Nigeria, it is love for sale. Okay. I, 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 want to, I want to ask if this 37 billion is confirmed. If it's truly 37 billion, mm. then I want to assume that um, this edifice 
would definitely make it to one of the heritage sites eventually. <laughs> really? If, if, <laughs> if, if at all, if <laughs> they have to build at a hundred thirty-seven million billion. right now. But, but listen, you see, to you, listen to you, Chuka, somehow yeah. I, all that kept coming to my mind is that if people like you can put together something like this and reason like this, mm. and then we have people representing us in, in the places of power, they're not representative of, of what, we, what Nigeria has to offer. Yes. So I'm bigging you up yes. in a way. I'm saying that okay. you know, anyone listening to you and the way you reason will say, ah, but this one is a Nigerian, so who are those who are representing people mm -hmm. like him? Yeah. They don't come near, because they're not reasoning the way you're reasoning, so there's a mismatch. You see, the funny thing is, you know, if I go back to around 1980 or 81, I remember I was in boarding house in England, and some boys sort of accosted me and said that, you know, this is in the days of military rule, obviously. And they said, how come Nigeria is ruled by those people if you are there? Okay. Or if, or, um, or and, then like they, and then they looked at me and said, okay, I'm presupposing that your father who sent you here has his head screwed on right, right? <laughs> how come your father is not the president of Nigeria? You know, what, is, what you're saying is, why is, what, what's going on in your country? Which is where horses. Mm. I mean, isn't it the problem of Nigeria that we do not have round pegs in round holes? holes. Yeah. And that we have people who are just there for the status, just yeah. for being there, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you look at something like this and you wonder, is this our priority right now yeah, with the it. rate of unemployment? Mm. Is this really what, we what should be our focus right now? You mean we have that no, much? Yeah. But I, and we I do not have that. the minimum it's wage. Apparent, it's apparent to really? even, even you, a you child know. in school that this isn't our priority. What I'm saying is, why do they think they can sell us this kind of foolishness? What do they take us for? I yeah, that's, like that's, it, that's it. it. You know, this is the sort of thing that you expect that if somebody came to, General, to Buhari and said, sir, we want to renovate the, you know, the National Assembly building. And he says, eh, is it bad? Yes, it's very bad. Oh, how much do you want to spend on it? Oh, 37 Just billion. I, ex I expect that he would have given the person a very hot slap and then said, it seems that you don't know that we don't have but, schools and hospitals. Yeah, get out of my office. But this is, this so is, this why is, what, you, this is what you guys are missing. Mm. Right? Please help this us. This is clearly a quid pro quo. Mm -hmm. That's how I read it. <laughs> it's a quid pro quo. I approve this thing. This is the cost of... That's because they came together. Security votes. No, no, not about security votes. <laughs> no, no. okay. I, I think that, you know, the, f f for them to approve this 30 billion, billion loan, yes. knowing how this our oh, people see. work, okay. they will have, ah, what's the change? Yeah. 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 That's the quick yeah, I said that already. In that's the, the thing. Sorry, that's what, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. So why do they even want that? Oh, yeah, because, so, I mean, this is money for the, they're not going to renovate anything. Hey, that's there's already, money for the boys, oh, right? No, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 this is already, this there's already a subsistence contract for the maintenance of the National Assembly. Correct. It's not falling apart. Yeah. I mean, if, if it were to be falling apart, you would have heard over the last, last assembly, last three, four years, issues around, oh, this building is falling apart. They're just constructing new, two new chambers for the, for the another side, Senate side and House side. Two new blocks. Yeah. So cover less than, so, less than three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. So what do you spend? What's urgent about what, exactly. it? What's dilapidated it's about it? It's a name for. So it's a name for. It's a very convenient fonts. name for. One of them said yeah, microphones keep going off still need to come from. I don't want to talking. believe that they've approved it. Seven billion dollars. No, but the, 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 the gentleman who okay, so it, said something like that said, yeah. said the president is aware of it. Okay. He was reported to have said the president is aware of the, the yeah. you know, because sometimes what tends to happen, people, because our president has this very powerful image. Everybody looks at him as a strong man. So whenever you mention his name, everybody... Not said he said, Oh, yeah, yeah, true. So, so everybody says, oh, he's aware of it. As if he being aware of it is therefore that, that now in a cover for... Uh, yeah, legitimizes, thank you, the, the transaction. Absolutely not. I, mean, I, I, I will say this. I am a strong critic of the president, but I, I know for a fact if the facts it. were to be made known to him, he about this that he will not sanction yeah. it. Yeah. I, 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 I take it for granted that if yeah. he, he were to the know yeah. the details of this, yeah. let me, let me bring, I, I let don't me think bring we'll in another. I don't think we'll have Recently, I spoke mm -hmm. to someone who was in the aviation sector, retired, and he was saying that something similar happened, well, not so similar, but it's a similar kind of tangent. They were bidding for uh, huge sums of money to be taken at 24% um, um, do you say interest from a certain bank right, to right, rectify right. the problem with wind shear, the wind shear factor that was causing planes to drop out of the skies. And when they finally obtained that huge sum, he was there and observed how those monies were shared. But he says he's sure, the same way Abeka is sure, that 99% sure that the president is not aware 
of how, because he feels that that has come under the guise of this new loan again, yeah. yes. you know, for renovations yeah. of it. And he feels the president 90% not aware of that. I, I think and, so. And that's I think, strange. I think, I think yeah, I, I, look, so it's even, even, get within, away with oh, this, even within this that's loan. Um, and this is another thing. When, billion is you know, a, a, couple, a, a couple of weeks ago, we spoke about the, the NTA. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you brought yeah. it up. Yes. Okay. Even within this 30 billion, this is a $500 million dollar Oh, no, yes. to the yes. NTA yeah, for digitization. Right. Yeah, that's oh, yes. right, yes. I mean, you can build three, four brand new TV from scratch with that kind of money. And so, Inflated costs. look, <laughs> I just think that um, obviously every leader has one or two pet projects that they need money for. I believe the president has a pet project within that 30 billion. billion yeah. And he's more concerned about how do I get this money to do this project. And so people are tacking on onto it. Onto okay. it. Yeah, yeah. This is what the, I think. Everything rises and falls on leadership. I mean, you, we can't say uh, perhaps the, the president is not aware of the details. That's where you're the leader. You should be aware of the details. You should be aware that this is going on. You should ask your lieutenants or your, your yeah. You should ask them, what is this going to... I don't get it. This is just a waste yeah. of resources. We don't need it. It's not needful. Yeah. Well, they say common sense isn't as common as we'd like to think. Or perhaps it's the exercise of it that's rare. After the break, Treasury is appealing to equity in our dealings with pregnant girls in school. That's common sense, isn't it? Where there is inequity in our application of rules, it makes for an imbalanced society. Of pregnant girls in schools. Now for centuries, the world divided human beings into two groups and then proceeded to exclude and oppress one group. That's Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie in We Are All Feminists. Feminist movements have campaigned and continue to campaign for women's rights, including the right to vote, to hold public office, to work, to earn fair wages, equal pay, and eliminate the gender pay gap, to own property, to receive education, to enter contracts, to have equal rights within marriage, and to have maternity leave. And one of the leading feminists in Nigeria presently, the Irelu Bisifayemi of Ikiti State, has been in the news. Amongst other issues, she's mainstreamed lately. My favorite is Operation Keep the Girls in School. She had spoken out against the continued expulsion of girls from secondary schools once they got pregnant, while boys, the very equator, with the weapon of life destruction in this context, continue with their studies. They get away with it, literally eat their cake and have it too. And now the baby girl, the elementary version of baby mama, drops out of school tanks a pregnancy and perhaps a trade, and in most cases, her life is jaundiced forever. A recovery is most times an arduous one lined with shame and stigma. Right, so such girls hardly make a comeback to schooling. Ikita State has now made it a law. Pregnant schoolgirls can now continue schooling, just as the boys who impregnated them. And this is a major win against institutional patriarchy at the very basic level for me. The Tribune, in its editorial of 12th November 2019, took on Irelu Faemi on the law, questioning the moral rights of pregnant students who remain in school and demanding for their suspension from school until a pregnant school girl is delivered of the baby. And I ask what happens in the meantime to his imperial Ikweda, the boy who got her pregnant in the first place, or wasn't it Tango? And I hear morality. Do Nigerians care about morality nowadays? I suppose morality is now old school, outdated, going by the popularity of big brother inmates, oh sorry, housemates. Well, the truth is that abstinence has failed miserably with the younger generation, no thanks to the heightened glamorization of sex through soft porn programs like Big Brother Nigeria and relentless sexual images in the media. Our young ones are consequently continually curious to try out sex. 
Nigeria's demographic and health survey in 2008 shows that 8% of males aged 15 and 19 and more than 20% of girls of the same age group had had sex at the age of 15. And nowadays, six to nine-year-olds are perpetually caught making out at corners. It's the grim consequence of the images we peddle as adults, and we should be very afraid. Now, female condoms should be readily available, that's what I think, and cheap to purchase, like male condoms, so that more women can be empowered to negotiate sex better, and girls then will have a choice to get pregnant or not to. And I believe the obvious imbalance is one of the reasons why abortions rates are so pervasive or rather so high in Nigeria and abortions quite per pervasive amongst girls in school. Otherwise, both the boy and girl involved in the making of a pregnancy shall henceforth be expelled from school. I don't believe that one akbaro is longer than another akbaro. How did we even allow this to be skewed for so long? Look. Operation Keep the Girls in School won't gain traction if you don't advocate for it in your state. And that's it for me. Well said. Well said. I should clap for this one. Yes, I, think. I like, I like <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, she yeah, landed that yeah, point. Yeah. Well. I think this is, this is beautiful advocacy. Well thought out, well, well presented. presented, and you know, and well. You know, obviously, a broadcaster, you could tell the voice. Very well <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, let's move. But, uh, you know, we move, uh, we move still. <laughs> um, but clearly, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm all in for this. Um, you know, I mean, uh, the one thing, though, is the, the thing about whether, and obviously, I think for to term, the, 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 the child should be in school as much as the, the pregnancy is not. Be, doesn't become visible because people, you know, kids, they will do all taunt, kinds of things. Taunt, uh, they will yeah. taunt and do all that kind of thing. But with regards to the male participant yeah. in this, you should suffer the same consequences. Absolutely. Um, so meaning? If the, meaning if the, if the girl, if, if the, for, the, for the period that the girl is out of school, he should too. Because yeah. you need to, if you don't, if they don't share in the consequences yeah. of that misdemeanor or that behavior, then... Th th Unfortunately, the way what if that boy goes and does it to another person and just and remains yeah. in school? You know? and so yeah. yeah. So I I I think that um, the first thing is we we clearly have a problem getting more more of our of, of girls, young people, protecting them and getting them in school. That's a major problem. And now when you now add to this, then you know you, you have you have. So I I, I completely uh, agree with this. Mm. Uh, the implementation will have to be again a little bit nuanced. Um, you know, given the fact of uh, pregnancy is, obvious, is an obvious thing and comes with difficulties and complications, especially for a young child, mm. and how to manage it at a young age, because again, it's unexpected, presents right. the yeah, challenges. Uh, unless you can also yeah. manage from, from home, because I know when I was pregnant, yeah. I was able to do my law school, I was able to manage myself and do my exams. So if the girl, because you're not trying to stop her from achieving an education, yeah. you're trying to protect her supposedly from the taunting at school. Right. So there's a way she can manage herself, get her notes, and still sit the exam and keep well, up with her peers. One of the things I, I wanted to sort of very quickly observe was, you know, I remember when I was doing a tour of one of the secondary schools, and they, they told me readily that when the girls come in, the girls are usually at the, the first top 10 are the girls in secondary school. Then quickly, after a year, the girls drop drastically because they get distracted by the male factor. They're busy looking good for the men and, and the boys. Are you for so, real? Yeah, honestly, and their grades drop. And whereas the boys can handle that in mixed schools, the girls don't handle it quite as well. So I'll just, the reason I'm making that point is to say, perhaps we need to even do preemptive strikes. We need to train girls to, I think it has to do with self-validation. You don't need to be mm. validated by the male right, figure. The male Learn to know that you're complete of yourself. You have something to offer true, of yourself. True. So build up their, their, you know, because a lot of girls are looking for that external validation unless they have parents or a father figure who can give it to them. Yeah. And then they're not looking for another guy to give it to them. So usually that's what makes them, do you say pawns? They fall for a guy so easily because he, he offers them, he sweet talks them. So maybe we can build up their morale that way. Then they know who they are. They're not swayed by any guy who just comes and says, you know, I love you, you know, be my Valentine. I think just, uh, I do completely agree with your point. I think is in line with what I was trying to say. Mm. Um, it's worrisome for me because what we're talking about now is effect. I think we need to go back to the course, the course yeah. you know, and deal with that issue. We can't pretend and hide that. Look, at that young age, 
the hormones start to play tricks on them. Our little kids, the they start to, yeah, they that. start to discover themselves and they want to experiment. Mm -hmm. So at that point, a lot of education is very important. We need to let them know that these things are happening. It's gonna, might happen, and there are consequences for them. You know, uh, now legalizing or telling kids who get pregnant that it's okay to get pregnant, I don't think okay, it's a good way. You think that being in school does that? Yeah, in secondary school, if think... you encourage it. Yeah. What I would advocate for is there must be consequence. If you get pregnant, both the yes. female child and okay, the male, of both school. of them would sure. have to take, have to leave take the school. Yeah. And Which is what, one of so the that would I discourage said, yes. other kids from okay, because you otherwise that the girl should continue I said Akmaroko Ngajokonlo meaning that it's let's make it a level okay. playground yeah. okay. if you got somebody pregnant you go away okay. with that person okay. right. but someone uh, uh, some somebody punctured that and said what if it's not a schoolboy who got her pregnant oh, I see. so, yeah, that's so then true. that becomes problematic yeah. mm -hmm. so if it's a it's an adult somewhere who placed a prank on her, got her pregnant, but she's still a secondary school girl. What then, how then do we apply the punitive of her not measure? Having an education. If she's underage, well, it's obvious what should happen next. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, but if she's too old for school but was in school, then it's different. She's a woman in school. Right. Then I suppose that would be when it's difficult to know what to do to the man involved. But then you let know. me just quickly say that for you talked about the naming and the shaming in school mm -hmm. as well. I think perhaps we could have special centers for the girls who get pregnant, so they band together, right? Okay. And okay. I think for the fact that we're talking Something. about is yes. a shift it's in our yes. thinking. Yes, yeah. yes. I know they're doing that in Sierra Leone right now, quite actively. Oh, yeah. fabulous. Mm. There's clearly more mileage we could do on that one. We'll let you carry on the conversation where we left off. After the break, it can it take the conversation in a different direction or perhaps in another dimension of the same thing. She's advocating for a resetting of our moral standards. The faults I arrived at where an unchallenged practice habitually subscribed to becomes the norm. The other day I had an experience that woke me up to the fact that though we seem to expect the opposite by default, honesty does make all the difference. To make a long story short, I recently drove into a petrol station with my fuel gauge registering at bone dry red. My intention was to tank up before speeding off to work. My tank was filled and my car failed to move. I immediately raised an alarm. Within moments, a mechanic affiliated to the said station appeared and began to intervene. My shine your eye alert was triggered and as if by reflex, my voice went up several octaves as I insisted, don't touch my cow, I want to see the manager. Surely the mechanic and fuel dispensing official were in cahoots to scam on seemingly or seemingly unassuming customers like me. I was wrong though. In the end, the mechanic detected and openly declared water was in the oil that was just dispensed into my vehicle. My vehicle was drained of the offending substance, serviced and filled up again. My taxi cost to and from work was also covered, all on the house. Upon telling this to a colleague, he said it was the woman factor that swayed things. I disagree. It was the honesty factor. That same day, upon picking my daughter from school, she was keen to unburden herself of an experience at school where she found herself lying by default to cover up for an unpleasant situation she found herself in of her own doing, I hasten to add. Her conscience, Cyrene, had not stopped blaring since then, even though she has subsequently confessed. She was disappointed in herself. I, on the other hand, was inwardly proud of her. The fact that she was painfully aware of when she crossed a red line was a cause for thanksgiving. Like my fuel gauge that showed red, we need to be aware that our ability to know when we cross the honesty line is our one saving grace as a people. We must stay honest by default if we're to sow and reap the long-awaited dividends of democracy. Yes, you, not someone else. Well, well, well. Definitely, they help you at the station because you're a woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or would it you're have been different if you were a man? No, there are some things that you don't do for men. Okay. You know, where, where cons uh, men consider other men like 
come on, this is life. Go and shape up and Deal go and do it. something. Your car won't start. Even if we did something to the car that messed you up and you're not aware. My friend, you are a man. Go and uh, deal with it, deal it deal and with settle it, problems. Yes. That's what, what you are here. What about the mechanic that said it was water? He didn't I think have maybe, to say maybe, maybe, water. Maybe the man, definitely woman factor played that. Look, I played, huge played, 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 played. Yeah. Let's not, they let's, give you let's a... Not, so let's not... Let's not... Let's not... After your car. Oh, yeah. There's not another side to the story. But I... But I also will consider the fact that... That they could have at the same time just lied and yeah. said wasn't that fault. Yeah, as everybody well. else was driving um, out. But I think looking at you, come on, I can. Uh, you, you look. Uh, I would say, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> she disarmed them. them. <laughs> no, look, you disarmed them. No, no, no. So, 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 but I, I, I look. What I tend to find um, these days is that we 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 are, we're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. <laughs> And maybe because of all the pressures. So every time I find that island of honesty, it's just, so you know, refreshing. it's refreshing. And um, look, I have, I, I, when I go into certain situations, um, I think that they're about to cheat me. And so I'm prepared. I'm, I'm, uh, yes, I'm defensive. <laughs> Aggressively so, passive aggressive in some circumstances. I'm like, yeah, like don't it, try you. You know, <laughs> but, even but don't even dare. <laughs> so, so this is good. Um, but is it a work? I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think so. <laughs> that, that, that's but what you, I think. you may not get away with that somewhere else. I mean, okay. they may just just insist that it's it got nothing to do with I, it. I, I, true, I was true, grateful true. for the fact no, that no, it happened. I'm not yeah. saying you will definitely premises, always get away yeah. with it. Yeah. Look, there are instances where, you know, something's, there's trouble on the road, a lot of quarreling, and then you're like, what's happening there? And then some of them are like saying, you know, if it wasn't that that person was a woman, I will deal. I will. I would have shown my true colors. Meaning, I will fight back. Which is a good thing. Anyway. So yeah. So yeah. generally, people tend to move Rainy back team. when it's a woman, as if we don't need to give her that. You know, stress. Her life, where well, she has. You know, we believe that women have the stress of a different things, type, yeah. and we need to toughen up. Yeah, it's, it's a male female I think thing. Of my, trouble, my trouble is a lot of times people speak about Nigerians as if there's a default. Dishonesty. Yeah, you know, it's Nigeria. Everybody does it. You know, so you almost bring us into this whole culture of dishonesty by default. <laughs> and, you know, when you now say, no, I don't do that, you look like the old man out or you look okay. like you're living in a little Even you're so naive. us as Nigerians, yeah. we, we, we tend to see someone who's honest as, huh? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, how do you survive? Which is just so disheartening because yeah. we, we are good people. Yeah. Anyway, remember the slogan, Zora. good people, great nation. Mm. We are. But... Yeah, I think maybe it's because a lot of us just want to survive. Mm. So out of wanting to survive, mm. people doctor the truth. And so you find a lot of people coloring the truth, mm. you know, trying to outsmart you by yeah, saying, ah, madam, under your motto, under your motto. Yeah. <laughs> so they can do something and then, oh, blind me, how, you know. But yeah, we just have to keep talking yeah. and asking people. I think this, it aligns with the advocacy that I push the most, family, you know, it boils down to your family values. Okay. If we begin to advocate for, you know, good values in our homes from infant stage, eventually I think um, a chunk of our, you know, problem as a nation might be addressed. Uh, when you say home, oh, when you say home and family, uh, yes. I... I quick at that in a, in a okay, well, curious please. way. Yeah. Because when we say family, what... What constitutes a family? Yes, to start with. And okay. then secondly, when do we really have time to be family in the Nigeria of today? In the Lagos of today? We Early in the morning, you're gone. You're back mm, late at true. night. The children are... Uh, been prepared for school, they're sleeping when you're mm, back. So, out all you know, you so when do you even really have time teacher. to be with the people? Mm. You have to be intentional. Yeah, yeah. If it's that important to yes. you, you have to be intentional. Yeah. That's why I was actually, I enjoyed the drive with my daughter. We were coming, you know, it was like a two hour drive. And the fact that she rushed to tell me, even on the phone the night before, she's like, there's something I want to tell you. And as soon as we're in the car together, she said that thing, she's not very talkative. So I really valued the fact that she was, what's this thing that's bothering you? And she told me the whole long story of how she lied and lied and lied. And then finally, when she couldn't hold it anymore, she confessed to it. And they were also shocked that she could lie. You know, lie. So, so I think the yeah. bottom line is, is creating a space for honesty mm. to, to try and to be rewarded and not to be criticized, Thank not you. to be put down. Yeah. If you create that safe space and reward system and reward to say, look, the fact that you're honest 
Um, it's it's okay. it, it, it's okay. a safe space it's that just multiplies to, itself. I think that's what we need to create more. Right. Okay. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we all need to keep our conscience gauge alive and active, and of course, create that safe space for others to also do the same. Your one way we continue to do that, though, your your frank feedback is much welcomed. On politics is a game of thugs. Ban Joshi says, Libra says we should go beyond the hashtag. There is need for us to stand up, leave our comfort zones, stand up for something and do something. Is this not what Shore did? <laughs> we hear you, Banjoshi. However, we continue to do what we can in the interest of a better society. On the same edition, A. Akbanti Ak Ak says, imagine 10 million naira monthly for ex-governors and ex-president. 90% of Nigeria's yearly budget is used to service our greedy leaders. Lazy youths, which way? Akbanti, are you one of the lazy youths you're directing the question at? Nati Rebel is on, on the same matter and says, there's no democracy in Nigeria. What they have is do or die, a do or die affair. Vote buying, thuggery and intimidation of the opposition parties by the government agents. It's quite unfortunate that Nigeria is decaying from inside. I know he says a lot more. Nati Rebel, you and I must rebel against the decay and play our part in advocating for a better society. Uh, George V. Emmanuel expands on a statement on primary health care. He says, in addition to what Vicky said on primary health care, it is not necessarily that it is in rural areas. Primary health care is the first approach to any individual, family, or community to address comprehensive and interrelated physical, mental, and social health well-being, according to WHO. Thank you for that, George. I hope you watched Dr. Rukewe's advocacy on this recently. She did very comprehensive advocacy. So do keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate NG. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Seydu directs our conscience towards the societal effects of single parenting. What affects one affects us all. That surely is one definition of society. Raising the total child, the societal effect of single parenting. Parents are the first point of contact for any child. When both parents are present in a child's life, the child is most likely to experience a balanced care Emotional stability of the parents is key to a child's development. Where one of the parents is absent, a gap is created, and this affects his or her development as a person. Single parenthood is the practice of building a family without a spouse or partner. As a system of building a family, single parenthood is becoming acceptable in our society. In Nigeria, single parenthood was formerly an anathema, where it existed at all, it was treated as an abnormal case. However, nowadays, single parenthood is fast becoming a norm. Historically, the death of a partner was a major cause of single parenthood in Nigeria, but now it is mostly due to divorce, early pregnancy, drug use, and so on, which is now rampant in the society. Sadly, researches have shown that children with single parents are three times more likely to drop out of school than children living with both parents. Also, it was discovered that the absence of a father figure in a child of a girl, a girl child, affects her self-esteem and ultimately the quality of her relationship with the opposite sex. Many literatures on academic performance among children suggest that children's academic performances improve when both parents are actively involved in their education. Life in a single parent household can be quite stressful for a parent and children. Members of a single parent family cannot function like those in a two parent family and may not feel comfortable. The parent may be overwhelmed by responsibilities of caring for the children, maintaining a job and keeping up with the bills. Single parenthood is problematic for children's socialization because they receive less economic and moral support less practical assistance and less information, guidance and supervision than children living with both parents. The family is the first socializing agent that a child comes in contact with. It has 
a great influence on the child's physical, mental and moral development. I will conclude this piece by saying, young people should be careful when making a choice as to who they choose to spend their forever with, because the wrong choice will not only affect the family, but the society at large. I, I, I will be the first to, let me first fire this thing out. Mm, I, 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 I don't agree. Mm -hmm. I think sure. the major issue is the absence of love, care, and confidence. And it can happen whether the both parents are available. And indeed, I can also show you as many, I tell you, even though I don't have to call names, but so many people who I grew up with, both parents, who are just not as emotionally stable. confident or stable. Right. You know? So I don't think that, yes, there's a certain disposition because it becomes the more economic challenges and the way society has, over time, um, visited the stigma that you're a single parent. It comes with consequences. But I don't think that that is really the problem. I think that, let me let you land. Yeah. Yeah. Marriage, marriage I, I, is no, wait, it's let, no solution mm. to having good kids. Precisely. Um, no. That's wait, one. Wait, wait, yeah. allow, it's allow an opportunity. It presents itself as an opportunity mm -hmm. for making that. But I don't think, because we, let's not, because I think what you're also saying is playing into that stigma that a, a father a single father with, with a child is some is inadequate. Is that inadequate, or a single woman with a adult with a child is inadequate? I actually don't think so. I think if they're unable to provide the love, the care, and the confidence building, then there's a problem. Um, but that, that but what's more worrisome is that society places the stigma that because you are a single parent, you are not fit for purpose, and then there's a and then and it carries the consequences. I think what we need to do is recognize that, look, societies change. Even before, even before we talk about societies, over a millennia, you've had single people who have raised wonderful children. Okay. And, and that just might... Wait, wait, let us, I, I think rather than box people into um, loveless marriages and unhealthy coexistence, uh, I, I think we should allow people to live their authentic lives as people with authenticity, right? You could say it's not okay to be a single parent, but what if the marriage fell apart? What then do you want them to do? Patch things up, and at the end of the day, it will affect the children. Yes, so I think what Seydou is you saying, know, if I get him right, and yeah. I, I may not have, is not that he's saying you need to be boxed into a loveless marriage or things like that, or he's trying to say that you know love is not important. I think what I get from what he's saying is that it's harder, and I don't think anyone would dispute that. It, because I know the stress I go through, even as a, a married uh, uh, co-parenting, when my husband is away for a period, and I'm having, I, for a long period, I operated like a single parent because my husband was in another country, we were transitioning, and I had to handle it as a single parent. I had to draw strength to be father and mother. It's hard, and anybody who says it's not hard is just faking it. it it's is. very difficult, even as two parents having to, you need that dynamic. Now, of course, you don't want to, if your, your husband is abusive and he's an abusive father, drug, it's even better to go it alone. But we're trying to say that the ideal situation, I don't think there's any disputing yeah, this, yeah. is to have two parents because there's a balance. There's, there's something the mother brings, there's something the father brings. That doesn't mean we're stigmatizing anybody. Mm -hmm. We're just saying this is preferable. And where you can preempt it and avoid getting yourself into a situation where you're having it, but any I, single parent will know I, what would they you go deny through the to fact raise a child. Of course, there's there some is. stigma to it. And we should just shed that by no, I'm not it. There is difficulty. I'm saying that obviously it is. I said it's a plus. Yeah. I said it's a so plus. So, what his advocacy is to say, look, if you can. It sounded like it. It sounded oh, okay. like it. Okay. The, 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 I, I can't speak. I, yeah, it yes. sounded a little bit like it. That's I, my I, point. I, That's I, why I disagree. Want to I wanted to correct that. Yes, yes. I honestly, I. It's not what you, you're I inferring. I have a lot of respect for women who have raised you know, children and alone and men, and men yeah. who have right. raised children al uh, alone on their own. But I'm saying that you know, it's, it's not easy. And by the way, there are two parents. You can have two parents and still be That's like in a single way. Oh, yeah. Because I, I did, I did oh, yeah. indicate there that parents that are present you have to be present mm. and intentional. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So, but the, the whole, the whole, the whole uh, advocacy is centered around, 
you know, is it possible that the challenge we're having as a country is because we're not dealing with these issues Parenting. from where we even, I, no, I with where that. we come yeah. together. Now I'm just, oh, no. see again, the I people, go... The people who are ruling us now sorry, are Amica, let, let me, let me, parents and they're no, still no, messing I, us I, up. I, so I, I always, no, no, let no. me finish, let me, see, it's... Sorry, I'm, I'm just, I, I, let me test I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I'm an engineer, right, yeah. and we say we deal with things from first principles. You go back to the basic. Why are we having problems? Um, besides some of the things I've given you here, there's statistics, figures to show the effect of raising children. Can we begin to address this issue from the beginning? Let's How? understand ourselves. When you're choosing your life partners, your life partner, can you begin to go a little further? Because Nobody, the effect of a... Look, no, look there, I'm just going to jump in there. If, Nobody the sees this coming. If, you use the word choose as if... You grew you, up like yeah, you just, a, a member of the royal family they will have chosen. These things happen. It's Life like happens. it's like My it's like I understand, know, but there are consequences. I, 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 I get what you mean. No, I don't want to be fair. No, no, no. I, I think no, see, no, no, it's, like, it's like it's like I, 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 I know what you're saying. Let me try. Let me try and speak yeah. for yeah. you. Yeah. Let me try and speak for you. Let me try and speak for you. Sometimes, the thing is saying there are situations. It's a bit like if my mom wanted to give me advice before I got married. Don't 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 just go with the, the fat, you know, the muscular bow. Look for forever after. Look for qualities in a guy. So if you're really thinking about oh, this guy, I have a he's just ooh, I like this, I like his snazzy. These are not long term priorities for you. This guy. That's hate and I remember, speech. Okay, <laughs> that's oh my goodness! <laughs> Look at the extreme. That's all the guy Look, has to okay, offer. Can I? 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 Can Daughter, girl from right, some girl. Other home. Now there are some inherent traits that would eventually come out in that relationship. Uh, it's like is this, it's a trap you are setting up because quite honestly, good can come out of it can. bad, as they say. Yeah. So, and I agree with you. Statistics probably show that it is better to have two. Present because I hope it's statistics. Yeah, because mm. statistics should also do two parents that are that are also <laughs> actively that are, Yeah, so I so in that sense I agree with your what with your with your what do you call it with your this advocacy the, okay. because because I'm I'm a, I'm uh, I wanted to say I'm a victim. I'm actually the prop. I'm the proponent. I'm the one who's 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 separated. So it's my children that are uh, from a broken home. home. So. Um, so I, I, I know, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know whether it's going to have any negative effect on them, to be honest. Um, I haven't seen any, mm, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to mm. come here and boast on air, only to be shocked in 10 years' time even, you know. But uh, um, I, I think it's what, just what one of I those think? things that yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's like it should, it, it, you can't... What yeah, if you know, have I two thieving parents siring... Um, Greedy leaders who want to renovate the national assembly. My, my advocacy <laughs> has really stirred up a lot, and I know it will stir up a yeah, lot of reactions. It, it, it has but no honestly, um, this is not to paint any single mother or father yeah. in bad light. We appreciate all the efforts, but if we can, we want yes. to raise balanced, you know, children that would yeah. eventually, you know, help our society. My advocacy was as much to discourage certain lifestyle choices as it was to encourage us to the way forward. After the break, Emeka has a roadmap to lead the way out of the land of excuses. After you, Emeka. If we take away excuses, what are we left with? My, my own philosophy is just do it. The land of a thousand excuses, who can guess the nation where you'll find people with the most excuses for not doing the right thing at the right time. Don't bother, let me tell you. It's my country, Nigeria. And let me start by making a confession. I'm equally guilty, and I have made excuses. In fact, I think I have a ready nylon bag full of excuses, ready to go. Um, you know, so you ask Emeka, um, why is your script for the advocate not ready? Uh, my usual thing to Ekene is like, I'm sorry, Ekene, my cat was ill. <laughs> My dentist broke my tooth. Um, and I have more of where that came from. I mean, but the reality is today, every one of us, you call a mechanic, a contractor who's doing your house, you name it. Why is the job not ready? And voila, 
plenty of excuses will pop out, like gummy bears. And we love to chew those gummy bears. We eat them up. I can't think of any other country where the answer to the question, can you fix this? Can you deliver on time? Will be God willing. As if I gave the task to God. Educa, where's my car? Madam, now my uncle was sick for village. Now I make an quick finish the job. I mean, we've gotten so comfortable with our mediocrity and our lack of rigor or professionality that it permeates all levels of our system. Now, don't let me get started about government. <laughs> it would be near impossible to get a firm deadline when a project, a contract, a, will be finished. And how much it will cost? You start hearing it's 37 billion, next thing it's 50 billion, next thing it's 2017 to 2020. We, there's no time. And you know, the reality is like our political leaders now pass the buck to God even. You know, God will find a way. God will give us the next governor. The state is in the hands of God. Um, the culvert will be built by God, God willing. I mean, we didn't elect God. I can't think of any other country where the answer to the question about a workman's duty is a contest between man and God. Which brings me to the next issue. How we think our country is exceptional, and not even in a great way. We're comfortable telling one another how things can't work in Nigeria. You bring up a good idea. Often the first thing you hear is, oh, America, such a brilliant idea. But you know, this is Nigeria. It no go work. <laughs> So now we've developed a language for incompetence and excuses. You hear it often, make I try. If you can do it, you do it. And I don't know about trying. <laughs> I go arrange them somehow. So we build up a whole lingua, a whole narrative about mediocrity. They were trying to excuse it. You hear, for example, the event should start between 8 and 9 a.m. What is that? If it starts at 8, it should start at 8, not, you know, I'll be there 8 to 9. Um, so imagine that. So we've, we've indeed become adept and comfortable finding ways to cut corners for quick fixes, for options rather than processes and lasting solutions. My take is this has to change if we must move forward. You know, I believe the key to our attitude to change from mediocrity is that we have to become uncomfortable with these excuses. We need to demand firm answers. And I've made a pledge to a kind of here that <laughs> I, mean, I have two scripts already ready. So the, for, for, the, for the next episode, I'm ready. I'm ready for you, you know. <laughs> Um, we need to also demand firm answers. We need to engage more and, and not be comfortable with woolly excuses, woolly explanations and excuses. So, guys, that's it. So, I'm, I'm, I've no, turned a new leaf for this new, new, new year. Don't worry, the taste yeah. of the pudding. <laughs> Whereas, without wanting to cast this person on any trade, but with, with artisans, it's terrible. Yeah. Mm. Okay, deliver this. Like, I've dealt with exactly what yeah. you talked about in the last two days. When are you delivering the goods? They call you at nine. Madam, I'm on my way. We are on our way. Where is your location? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. You send the location, you're ready, you're just waiting for the call. Two hours later, three hours later, you call and say, Oh, we have gone to the factory. <laughs> factory? I thought you had it in stock. Oh, and then they come since nine, they come at five PM. I don't get it. You make you know So they tie you up. They, so yeah. they tie you up. And mm -hmm. It's more, more um, honorable to just say, you know what, madam, I, I can't make, I'm calling you this early so you can plan your day. Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. You know, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll get it out today, and then I'll come tomorrow. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Everybody's I know there's a cost, there's an economic cost to it. There is. And uh, my worry is that we've built up this whole, so, there's a socio-economic cost to it. So we've planned events, which is the worry thing. So you stay, to say an event will start at 8 a.m., People strolling at any time. No, people call at 8.30. Are people there? Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, 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 it's actually worse in Freetown. Somebody, yeah. so I was reading funny. somebody's write-up in Freetown. Apparently, uh, you know, the, the, we're, even, we're just doing... The African we're just time. Doing, we're just starting compared to Freetown. I, I saw this really? person says, yes. Wow. He gave some illustrations. But that's not to make us feel better. But I, I'm one person that... They can call me the, do you say the brigadier? I, I, I like to make people feel uncomfortable when they start. Not yeah, that I like sure it. Do. Not that I like to. <laughs> but I, no, let me not say I like to. No, I don't like to, but I've learned how to do it because I dislike, yeah. I dislike things that are not clear, you know, because that's not how I live my life. I put the same stress I put on you on myself first because I don't like, I, I respect a lot of people when they can give me definite. So this kind of person that will say, I, just I can't do it. That. I can't do it. I, I, that, my respect goes up through it's the roof for you. But when I notice you dissing me like yes. that, then I start, I start watching for how to narrow your space of wriggle. So in the end, what you're left with is that you don't deal with me or you deal with me on my yeah. terms because I can't deal with 
the, that yeah, kind that's of prevarication. So you can't handle yeah. it. So, and so, if I noticed, yeah. for example, I said to one of my colleagues recently, because he made a statement and said, I'm ready, only for him to come down and find he wasn't ready. I said, next time you say ready, I'll give it five more minutes. And he laughed. I said, I'm very serious, because I've noticed your, your ready is not your ready. And I can't play that game with you. Oh, no, you know? You're ready, so, not your ready is even better. Mm. You make um, arrangement with somebody last night to come in at 8 a.m. today. You call at 8.15 to say, are you any by any chance close by. He says, oh, nobody's saying to any number to him. Actually, right now is our song go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like? Oh, what? classic. No, but I don't think it's artisans. I think it's, you'll be surprised, everybody, the kind of everybody. elite people it who do across. this. You'll be surprised. Across. I, I, you think, I think there's, there's really no, no, um, there's no prize. You don't put any prize. If there's a cost to it, for instance, if I have an appointment with you and you don't show by eight o'clock, I move. I, oh, you, you don't understand? Even call. I don't. I, once you're not there, I move. Yeah. Then we'll begin to, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 So don't, do, regardless of what it is, if we begin to demand for no. service. It's the same with our and government. Then for you re rendering service. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? You yeah. rendering yeah, service. Value proposition is very important. You understand? And you know that you have to. It's about the customer. He said he was body in You understand? So you then forced them. he said them. it was on Allen, Sorry. that's boarding a flight to come into Lagos. So we said, OK, you are, you are, you are boarding right now. Yes, we're boarding. Oh, God, what should I have come <laughs> yesterday? Then it became hours later, where are you now? Oh, I'm on Allen. We're coming, that's to meet us in Victoria Island. And he never showed up. And wow, yeah. what? I, I think that. Never. I, wow. I just, you know, you, you go to Switzerland, so they say a train will, will arrive at 3.06, then they can be that. And by Precise. 3 or 6, the thing, the thing is there like perhaps, magic. Perhaps, you start saying, yeah. how do they, this thing will live at 3.15? You know, I think there's a link. I want to draw the connection between our fear of holding our governments accountable and our and own I behavior. think so, yeah. Because we don't yeah. hold ourselves accountable. I right. noticed that Nigerians, and I'm, I'm being, this is as frank as I can be, mm -hmm. we love that wriggle room. We love that gray area. Mm -hmm. If you meet people who start telling you, this is it, this is the you immediately get this cold feel like, oh, right, right. why are you doing like, like where you go? Why are you doing like where yeah. you go? You know, they don't like it. They don't like systems. They like, oh, let's just maneuver. So let's, just, cultural, let's just switch yeah. up. Yes. I, and I keep trying to close it down because I say, this is inefficient to operate like this. Let's do things without fear or favor. Let's do things without regarding people. Let's have systems in place that make it a default. I, I talked about this when right you ask someone. So, um, you know, let me use myself. I mean, how many kids do you have? About three. About. I mean, what, 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 what do you mean? Yeah, because you ask some people, like, how many, you know, is that, but you know, and there's some Afri I African don't man, know. African <laughs> man cannot say you, you can't tell you exactly. exact number. Now, maybe, Those are the ones uh, I know about. Oh, how gosh, how do you get to the Not point funny. where, wow. where <laughs> you cannot pin tell, down, you can't pin down your own? I, you know, I, look. We like the room to maneuver. And you know, we're, no, all, we're yeah. all guilty of this. No, that's, we, that's we really, And you know, they say, they say when you're, say, when you're, oh, sorry when you're in the, you're less when you're, is it, how do you yeah, say, when you're in the I... picture or when you're in the frame, you don't see the picture, right? Mm. Yeah, right. It's easy. Typically, I'm Nigerians would, you know, would give you analysis, tell you all the things that are wrong, but they'll never, you know, Put the searchlight on themselves. Mm -hmm. When you have appointments, you keep to your appointment. You pay your taxes. You all your civic responsibilities. You do them. You understand? These there are, are the things that you will demand. Of these and still get then they should demand. The they should demand for service. You you pay for a flight. This flight is supposed to leave at 1.30 uh -huh. p.m. It doesn't leave until 6.30 yeah. p.m. Am I raising my voice? No, please raise your voice. <laughs> please, I, I think what we need to do is live more accountable lives yeah. so that we can now be emboldened to hold our government accountable. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Look, um, for me, really, I think, uh, I, you know, as my advocate says, I think it's, a time, it's time, especially in this new year, for us to be more uncomfortable with, with people not keeping to promises and, and deadlines and not being true to time. Um, because good habits are formed by deliberate, persistent effort. So although this is just the beginning, it's a good beginning, I think. So I have pledged to my producer, <laughs> Kenna here, that I'll, I'll keep the momentum going. Yes. And you keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms, <laughs> on Facebook at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, when we'll be engaging you once again with season topics. And let's keep this one honest. Till next time, and we keep advocating for a better society. 
Bye and uh, happy new year, guys. Yes, yeah. so happy new year <laughs> happy again. New year. <laughs> happy new year. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, like <laughs> terrible strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news.